Hello and welcome back to our Bonedo Vintage Drum Series. Today's topic is going to be about Ludwig metal shell snare drums. So we are going to do a little comparison with four different snares. Namely, the very famous LM402 14x6.5 Ladeloy Suprophonic snare drum, the 14x6.5 Ludwig Super Sensitive snare drum, the 1970 Cut Batch Chrome Over Brass 14x5 snare drum, and last but by no means least, the 14x6.5 Ludwig Black Beauty snare drum. So, as you may have noticed from the introduction before, today we are going to compare brass and aluminum shell snare drums by Ludwig. The snares that we have today are not old, old. They are all old, but with old, old, I mean from the 20s or 30s or 40s. Our snares that we have here are from the 60s and from the 70s, so from the, yeah, from the rock era and, yeah, maybe one can also say from the golden era of um, the Ludwig Drum Company. Okay, snare number one. That's the... 14 by 6.5 LM402 Suprophonic snare drum. The very, very famous John Bonham. I don't know whose drummer snare drum. I think there's. I think everybody had them. I think nearly everybody played one. Um, it's, yeah, maybe the rock snare drum out there. Um, the one that I have here is, of course, mine. <laughs> and um, it's a Keystone, 60s Keystone, um, La Deloy, one from 1968 in, yeah, in pristine condition without any kind of pitting. That's quite a thing with the La Deloy saprophonics as they tend to rust under the chrome because the, yeah, the chrome process that Ludwig applied was not very good. So most of the saprophonics that you buy today from the 60s or 70s, the aluminum saprophonics, um, have those, yeah, those pitting all around and but that's not the case with that one here it's equipped with a remo controlled sound head on the top an ambassador hazy on the bottom and yeah 42 taiwanese wires Yeah, how does one describe that drum? I mean, it's, yeah, it's for many the rock snare drum out there. Um, it has a very clean tone, very bright tone, um, quite dry, with lots of ring and, yeah, lots of projection. The ring may be offensive to people who prefer data sounds. So those who prefer some, yes, yeah, some, let's say, um, yeah, backbeat or indie pop sounds that are quite popular today, those are the ones who will probably put some moon gels or some dampening rings on the drum. However, um, I don't like that. I leave all my drums open. And um, yeah, it's a very, let's say, classical 
classical um, rock tone with, yeah, some very, very nice sustain, lots of cut in the room, quite loud. Um, I have to admit, I like the 42 strands on um, that particular drum. John Bonham used them as well. They used the, the, the Gretsch ones. And I think it's quite suitable for that drum. Well, <laughs> they are quite expensive, especially if you want one which has, yeah, not many errors of pitting or no pitting at all. And there's also a price difference between the Blue Olive ones and the Keystone ones from the 60s, of course. Recently, I saw a Keystone Supra from, I think it was from 67, Ladeloy, um, with a bit of pitting on it um, for around, I think, 1,500 euros. And a Blue Olive one in very good condition is also nowadays around 1,000 euros plus minus. This one here that's from 68 without any kind of pitting, I think that's around, let's say, yeah, 1,800 to 2,000 euros. Snare number two, that's the 14 by six and a half Ludwig super sensitive snare. Uh, construction wise, the shell is nearly identical with our snare number one. So with um, the Saprophonic, it's also a uh, Ladeloy shell made out of aluminum, chromed aluminum, seamless aluminum. However, the decisive difference between the Saprophonic and the Super Sensitive is the strainer. The Super Sensitive has a parallel mechanism. Um, Sound-wise, it sounds different to the Saprophonic. Um, it's, I think, in my opinion, even drier. Very, very, very articulate. Um, yeah, ghost notes are very, very sharp. Um, the drum, the sound of the drum itself is, I think, even sharper than the one from the Saprophonic. Um, however, it sounds beautiful because of that fact. It's not only a sound which is suitable for orchestral music, which was yeah, the main purpose of that snare drum, due to the parallel mechanism. Um, it's also suitable for rock music or metal music or, I don't know, you can really use it for a wide variety of, um, of genres. Um, I equip this drum here with um, the regular Remo control sound as a better head and as a resonant head I do use a Remo Ambassador no color head. The regular Ambassador Hazy does not work properly with um, the parallel mechanism because once you disengage the wires um, you may have a problem that they lie on the here on those gates so when you disengage the snares and you hit the drum, the snare drum also starts to rattle because of that fact. So if you want the snare to work properly, you definitely need to put a no color head on it as the resonant head, okay? Otherwise it won't work properly. Snare wires are some, I think, Gibraltar or even some OEM, Ludwig, clones. Anyway, you need special snare wires for it. Otherwise, they will not work.
famous players of the Ludwig Super Sensitives are, yeah, or were uh, Phil Collins, uh, Bill Bruford. So there were actually quite a few who used um, Super Sensitives. Um, I would personally not take this thing on a tour. Reason for that is the parallel snare mechanism, which is quite impressive and yeah, quite, let's say, lavish <laughs> in terms of the parts. Um, however, um, I think it can be, yeah, prone to the life on the road, the hard life on the road. Um, the good thing with that mechanism is you can try out lots of different settings from the wire tensions, from uh, the height of the, of the overall snare wires and from the distances to the resonant head. So you can experiment a lot with it. Um, however, um, personally, I would rather take a snare drum with a regular snare mechanism um, on the road. I mentioned before um, that the snare has a very dry sound, even drier than the regular saprophonic in terms of tone. And um, yeah, the ring is also reduced. So I think it's a very, very nice studio weapon um, if you want a rather controlled um, sound. And I think that was the main reason why many um, swore on, um, yeah, on the super sensitive. Um, they got discontinued a few years ago. I still Ludwig build them until 2014 or 2015. I'm not quite sure. I remember that they were heavily expensive due to the fact that the, yeah, the strainer system is quite complicated. Um, it's nice to have it. It's a very, very, very nice sound. Uh, prices on the used market, fun fact, even though the mechanism is way more complicated and there are way more parts on it than, to, than on the regular saprophonic, the prices for a, yeah, six and a half in good condition is around nowadays, yeah, you can find them for five or six hundred euros, which is quite affordable for such a drum. Okay, snare number three, that's an LM400 14 by five saprophonic. However, this one here is a bit special. It's a cut batch one from 1970 and the shell is not made out of lard alloy. It's a chrome over brass shelled one. So those are quite rare and quite hard to find. Um, compared to the La Deloy, um, the brass ones or the brass shelled ones sound, yeah, a lot darker. They are not as bright sounding as the La Deloy ones. Um, still very articulate, mm, very good snare definition also. However, I have the impression that they sound a tad, yeah, fatter under the stick. Um, it's a very, very desirable sound if you're looking for a, yeah, very fat backbeat studio snare drum. Um, I know that there were quite a few endorsers, Ludwig endorsers, John Bonham was one of them, who um, disliked um, the sound of the COB models, his Supras were according to 
various reports that I read always made out of Ladeloy because he also said they are sounding way too dark for my taste. I mean, the brass ones are sounding way too dark. Um, I don't agree with that, actually. I mean, it doesn't sound bad at all. It's a beautiful sounding snare drum. Um, also lots of projection, lots of bite. Um, however, as I said before, it's way darker than, yeah, the regular um, Ladeloy, or the regular, I meant I said regular, because most of the subraphonics that are out there are made out of Ladeloy. They even still build them out of Ladeloy today. Yeah, that snare here is also equipped with uh, the regular remote control sound. Regular Ambassador Hazy on the bottom and some phosphor bronzy wires. Um, the original dampening knob um, is missing. Um, I got this without it. Um, I'm not sure if I need it as I don't dampen my snares usually. Yeah, all original, original butt end, um, original snare throw off. That one here is also called the P84. It's also a transition model. So it's a bit of a hybrid of the regular P85 and the old P83 uh, from the 60s. You can see it here. And um, it's a bit smaller than um, the regular P85 that came later on with the regular blue olive snare drums. Um, they are not that cheap, however, they are not as expensive as the chrome over brass ones from the early 60s, the Keystone um, chrome over brass ones, original brass ones. Um, however, they do not differ in sound or in construction. Um, I read that actually the shells were made uh, in the 60s, so those were some leftovers, apparently. That's the reason why um, the badge is cut, because normally you would see a keystone badge over here, and apparently Ludwig found some shells back, yeah, in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, and they decided to sell them. But um, since the blue olive badge was a bit too big, um, they had to cut it in a half. So that's the reason. They are rare, um, but yeah, as I said before, not as expensive as the ones from the early 60s. Okay, snare number four, maybe, yeah, the recording snare drum and the uh, holy Ludwig grail. Um, the Ludwig 14 by six and a half, black beauty with the blue olive badge. That snare here is actually from 1979, 1980. Um, it already has the, yeah, the badge with the rounded 
uh, edges. Um, however, it's a seamless brass shell. Later on, Ludwig switched from brass to bronzy due to uh, cost reasons. Um, this thing here is made out of a single piece of brass, before anybody asks. It's not bronzy, it's brass, even though it has rounded corners. What else is there to say about the Ludwig Black Beauty? I mean, that snare is obviously a legend. It's still a studio weapon for, uh, yeah, many drummers today. I think every big or every well-known and renowned studio has a Ludwig Black Beauty in the, in the arsenal. Sound-wise, they are, I mean, they're incredible. They are also quite dark due to the um, brass shell. Um, however, they are very fat, um, also very articulate. Not as articulate as the La Deloy, um Supra that I have. Um, but yeah, way fatter, you know. I mean, um, it's the snare for backbeats and for, yeah, for big sounding productions where a, yeah, a nice and controlled, fat snare sound um, is needed. That snare drum here is equipped with an, an Aquarian texture coated power dot head, the Aquarian Classic Clear snare side, some OEM stainless steel snare drum wires, and yeah, basically that's it. Everything on that particular snare is all original. Price-wise, yeah, um, I mean, they were expensive a few years ago, but uh, yeah, somehow in the last couple of years, uh, prices exploded, especially for the one with the regular P85. That's maybe one thing that I forgot to mention. Um, they were built with two different strainers. The ones with the P85, are way more desirable than the ones with um, the parallel snare mechanism from the regular Ludwig Super Sensitive. That was version number two. They were also available as a five inch model. That here is a six and a half. Um, yeah, back to the prices. I mean, price wise, it's, how shall I say, crazy what went on uh, in the last couple of months. Um, especially the model with the P85 strainer, so that model here um, is ridiculously expensive today. Uh, I saw one sold for, I think, three and a half thousand euros or so in good condition. And I think there's not even an end right now coming. So prices are going up and up and up as they are very, very rare and very, very desirable. And yeah, what shall I say? <laughs> the hype still lives. Okay, that's it for today's episode. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, feel free to write them down below. Also, if you like what you just saw, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. We are going to shoot some more episodes of our vintage series in the near future with some very, very interesting content. So yeah, be prepared for that. Until then, see you next time and bye-bye.